Welcome to my channel Adam's Adventures and today's video I visited this incredible ruins of an abbey in Yorkshire Moors which is Revol Abbey that once was a hub of the trade back in the medieval times. Abbot William and 12 monks founded Revol Abbey in 1132 and decided upon to bring back the principles of monetism from the Cistercians order. This would include a daily routine of church services, reading and manual work. Revolt was prospered and later on there would be other Cistercians settlements to be established in Northern England and Scotland. By 1160s the Abbey would have around 640 men who dedicated their services to God. The community made up of choir monks which spent most of the time in church as well newly formed type of monks were called lay brothers to help around the land. The abbey attracted many high caliber recruits including one like Alred who later would become a saint. Revol would become a place of piety, provider of charities and hospitality as well an important landowner in over 400 years its existence. The Rye Valley landscape has been managed for over 900 years and the community at the Abbey resorted their interventions engineering of providing natural water supply of fresh water through tap, something that was never not heard of and wasn't given to the local population. Majority of the drainage occurred through a channel to the great drain which when the gate was released water was flushed downstream. It's still fascinating how machinery worked when the monks used it back in the day. Water was collected and stored in tanks or cisterns as a reserve of supplement if the lack of water was generated in the driest period of the year. Very lightly was recycled for usage of washing, laundry and industrial. Alred reportedly built a small cold water bathing sink for spiritual and physical health. An infirmary was built within the grounds to accommodate the sickness and ill of the monks. It was built in the late 1150s and Alred was very poorly that he could not sleep in the dormitory which was expected in the Cistercians abbots. He had his own private house next to the infirmary and was used up till 1500s. Here a day room was built for the monks to access their work activities such as copying manuscripts and mending clothes. Lamps were hung on the ceilings. Some of the fragments of the roof just about managed to survive and are placed in the museum on site which you have a glimpse of that later on in the video. Above this room was the dormitory and around 140 monks slept in this particular room with nothing but mattresses as comfort. The 20 or more monks that who formed the community had to supply comfort and privacy as a high expectation.
Going into the main church, here is the naval area, where of course the main focus of this former religious building is. It was that for the community gathered for their prayers and daily worships. On feast days, the church would be crowded with brethren like bees in a hive. Here you will be standing in the earliest surviving part which dates back 1140s. The columns were very much plain of keeping simple and early of citizens of ideas of austerity. Twice daily the lay brothers would gather for their prayers, they soon be seized of the community by the 14th century. After this time small chapels was created between the columns in which you might able to see the drainage on the floor which was used for washing utility. This is the crossing part where the church served as two different communities. The Latin literate choir monks sang eight times a day for the services which was in the eastern part. The large literate lay brothers would have a much simpler services and served God within their labour work was featured in the western part of the church. The church was built started in 1140s but later on was altered and extended to a much larger structure. From mid 12th century the church was very plain and simple comparing of when it came to 1220 much more later time that it had unique arches and windows with pointed heads around the frames. It sure was imposing but extremely talented of sculpture ornament at the time. Here is obviously the holiest part of the church, the altar still pretty much where it stands and in fact had silver and gold shrines when Ulred was here date back to 1147 to 67. Near the high altar are some pillars of which there are some cutting of tombs of important people who made gifts or money towards the abbey. Chapter house here was where the monks would have gathered for their daily meetings. They would begin off readings from a chapter of Rule of Saint Benedict. Also the monks would have confessed their faults, discussed business and have received distinguished visitors here. This part of the building was built around the same time when Ored who was abbot at the time and most of the graves of former abbots still here. The design of the building was again plain and most likely looked from an early Rome Christian era. Rivo was the biggest hubs of trade during its heyday and trade was very high of which the fleece from the flocks became quite rich of selling the goods to support of the abbey. 
it went as far as Italy, which was the most famous trading route of the time. However, from 1270 to 1400, it suffered a much difficult time with the result of epidemics. Even before that, like the war between England and Scotland in 1322, which was pillaged by the Scots, and the Black Deaths, which caused stress of the trade to go in turmoil and debts. By 1380, there were only 15 monks and three lay brothers left. Foremost, the worst ways yet to come for the monastery when Henry VIII's reign began, when the destruction of many abbeys and revolt was not far behind with being a, the victim of the ruthless king at the time. The abbey was suppressed by December 1538 and all of the monks was cast out but received pensions. Revolt was sold on to Thomas Manners, Earl of Rutland However, the plate, bell and lead from roofs was reserved for the king. With records showing, Manners decided to extract and strip off everything of value from the abbey and have nothing left but ruins, which of course was the case. Revo Abbey stands now as an English heritage site, which you see here what devastation does when wars and diseases occur to these monsters of structure. Thank you for watching this epic video on Revo Abbey that I've made and if you enjoyed this type of videos feel free to like, comment and subscribe to the channel which benefits more adventures in the near future.